Hi, I'm Ian Stone. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer. Moulin Diesel is my studio. One of my side projects is I also do pet portraits and I get asked a lot how exactly I do those. What goes into them? What's the end product look like? So I wanted to take a little bit of time today and show you what goes into this portrait right here. Now to start off, I work completely digitally. I do all my artwork on the computer. I work on a Mac and I use a combination of mainly Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator along with Daz Studio, 3D Blender, Sculptress, and an assortment of other little apps. My most important tool is this, a Wacom tablet. I use a pressure sensitive pen with it to mimic the act of drawing and painting. So for example in Photoshop, the harder I push, the darker a brush stroke gets, or the bigger it gets depending on the tool settings. This allows me to work just like I would if I was sitting at a table drawing or painting in a studio. Now before I get into the process behind making the portrait, I want to give you a little background. The client, Sabrina, previously hired me to do the logo and business branding for her grooming salon, Rockbug Grooming. Then she hired me to do a tattoo design for her. And then a portrait of her pit bull Penelope. And then one of her guinea pig, Declan. And then a science fiction version of Declan. Along the way, she has me do all sorts of new things for her business when she needs them, like typesetting this window decal to advertise with. Consequently, not only is Sabrina a great regular client, but she's become a close personal friend. Some time ago, she hired me to do a portrait of her Neapolitan Mastiff, Thor. First things first, a good freelance artist always discusses the client's wants and needs with them. In this case, we decided on a graphic style more like a comic book than the painterly style I did for her other pieces. She also mentioned wanting props in the portrait, and we kicked around some ideas until we decided on a dapper gentleman look. It just so happens that while we were hanging out at the salon, my wife snapped a pretty great picture of Thor sitting with me. We all decided that it would make a great picture to base the portrait on. So, back in my studio, I set up a 16 by 20 inch canvas in Photoshop. It's a good idea to work big because you can do a lot with it when it's done, and I try not to ever work too small. I open up Google and do a little research. I need a top hat, a bow tie, and a monocle. I just need references to give me a starting place when I draw. I assemble all the pieces on a canvas and start sketching. I thought while I was going it would be fun to put a hammer on Thor's hat just for laughs, so I look for Thor's hammer too. Sabrina said she wanted the Viking-styled hammer from mythology rather than the hammer from the Avengers character. With a sketch done, I email it to Sabrina to see if she likes where it's headed. She responds that day that she loves the sketch, and so now it's time to get into the nuts and bolts of the piece. I select a hard brush that I've set up to act like an inking brush. Using black, I outline the sketch and start building the illustration. This part goes pretty fast, I'm just blocking it in over the sketch to get things in the right place. Once it's all blocked in, it slows down to a snail's pace because now I have to go through and polish it up to make it look really clean and professional. This part actually takes the longest in the entire picture. Basically, I'm shaving the pieces into fine points and cleaning up the roughness by going back and forth from the brush to the eraser. And I'm not gonna lie, this part is tedious, and towards the end, I'm really ready to be done with it. But patience is always rewarded. With that done, I get to the fun stuff. First thing I do is start sampling colors right from the photograph and then blocking them in. Right now, I'm only interested in flat areas of color. We're just blocking it in like it's gouache or acrylic paint or something. I don't know why, but I always think in terms of real art materials like pens and pencils and paints. Maybe it's a holdover from art school when I worked with real paints and pens and pencils, I don't know. It's pretty silly. Anyways, now the main color areas are all blocked in. I call this whole group of colors glazes because when I'm done, they will interact with everything the way colors do when they're baked onto clay. See? There I go, thinking in terms of real world stuff again. Now I create a new group and call this one ink washes. And it's not really ink, of course, but I'm going to come at it like it is. So I pick some scatter brushes that look kind of like diluted inks or watercolors and start shading and highlighting over the solid colors. This takes a while too because, because I'm a crazy perfectionist. 
but watching that picture start to come off the screen is really cool. Okay, here we go. With the shadows and highlights painted over, it's really starting to come together. Now we're ready for the background. So, over the years, I've amassed a tremendous library of resources to use for art and design. I have literally gigabytes of textures and stock photos and fonts and plugins for my apps. Along with some of the stuff that's built into Photoshop, I can really build some complex things very quickly. Okay, here's the final background right here. I chose this overall pinkish hue based on Sabrina's crazy love for pink, and all told this background has about five layers to it. Now we put it all together. The ink layer. Now the colors. The glaze colors get that baking I mentioned by blending the whole group with the textures from the background. I want this whole thing to look like it was hand painted. I mean, technically it was but I need it to have a retro, slightly grungy feel to it. Finally, the most fun part is doing lighting effects, and these really bring the whole thing to another level. And there we are, all finished. I email a small copy to the client for her approval. She loves it. So then I send her her high-res version. All totaled, this particular piece took me just over 12 hours to complete. Let's do a real quick recap. Research. Sketch. Inking. Colors. Color washes. The background. And final touches, including the lighting effects. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little peek into the digital art world. And if you're considering getting some artwork for yourself, hopefully you have a better idea of what goes into that. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them for you. Please get in touch with me. In the meantime, please check out my website for info on how you can get some awesome artwork for your walls. Thanks for watching. Cheers.